Hello, you guys. Um, today we're gonna talk to the King Mala. I just found something else super cool that like, we just had to change up the entire intro right now because maybe we should tell them. I know. Maybe we should tell yeah, them. Yeah, because it's top secret like, info. I was stalking her Instagram and I saw the Puerto Rican flag and I was like, oh my God, are you Puerto Rican? I'm Puerto Rican. She's Puerto Rican. <laughs> She's I know. Puerto Rican. The first Puerto Rican on the show. I know. It's no, insane. Seriously. It's insane. I don't meet a lot of Puerto Ricans. And so I'm always like, oh, yo, what's up, Puerto Rico? Let's what? go. I can't right now. So, so, okay, so your mom is Puerto Rican. Yes. And your dad? My dad is Mexican. Wow. But I'm super close to my Puerto Rican side of the family. Like, last Christmas I spent in Puerto Rico and New Year's and everything. And I love Puerto Rico so much. I'm That's obsessed. Right. Yeah. So what was it like growing up in, like, a Hispanic household? Like, oh, my God, it was amazing. I miss it so deeply because it's just, like, the culture is very lively. It's very rich. Mm. It's, like very loud and funny and tons of family around all the time and I feel like you move to LA and it's a little bit more of like a solitary vibe mm -hmm. I think like living alone as an adult you sort of like do your own thing you see your friends once in a while but it's very like calm and quiet but I grew up and like my cousins all my aunts my grandma my grandpa were at my house 100% yeah, of the time yeah what does Christmas look like dude like, it's insane how do you, you guys get lit like, oh my god so lit it's so like I don't know. The Everyone's just always trying to like, turn yes, it down. Yes, every time, dude. It's so fun. But my, I have three siblings, and they're all way younger than me. All my cousins are way younger than me. So it's just like a ton of kids. Everybody's friends come over. Like this last Christmas, I brought my boyfriend home, like for the whole Christmas time, and he was like, dude, it's like nonstop. Like from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed, like there's music playing. Everybody's constantly yelling. And yes. <laughs> Fighting, but like in a loving yeah. way, and it's like so intense. Just like but yelling, it's so fun. Fighting. <laughs> yeah. it's, that's wow. Okay, so El Paso. Yes. So tell us about like just growing up there. And yeah. Like, even like the music scene there too. I know it was, it's a very interesting town because it's Texas, but it's a border town. So like the culture is very immersed in like Mexican American culture. So mm -hmm. it's like I don't know. It has a very specific vibe, but. There's like a really cool underground music scene there. So I've been like playing music live since I was really young and I did like songwriting competitions and a bunch of random shit just growing up. And um, I also went to like a classical conservatory cause I was homeschooled. So I didn't have like access to like public school programs for music. So I couldn't do like orchestra or choir or anything like that. So I found this conservatory. So I studied opera for like eight years <laughs> and did that. Wow. Cause it was the only music I could find. Um, but yeah, it was very random. I feel like I had a very specifically strange experience just because I was homeschooled. Both of my parents like migrated to Texas when they were like teenagers. So they were both sort of like, I don't know. It's just, Why yeah. Why were you homeschooled? Um, I read a book in fifth grade about a girl that was homeschooled and I was like, bro, that's the shit. Why, am, why are we not doing this? Because I hated school. I didn't want to be there. Um, and I was like, I could just be home and be doing my thing. Like, I want to do that. And so I brought it to my parents and they were like, fuck, no, why would we ever do it? Like, that's insane. <laughs> and I was like, bro, just trust me, like, look into it. And for a year they researched it. And then after a year they were like, you know what? Sure, like, let's do it. And then I was homeschooled from then until I graduated high school. What is that like being homeschooled? So you have like two hours of work? Who, Pretty who much. Who you? Um, so when I was really young, my mom did. And she's a stay at home mom, so she, like put together a whole curriculum it was very like within her reach just sort of I think until like middle school and then I joined this co-op where it was like a bunch of homeschool families come together and like create a school basically once a week and some parents teach certain classes sometimes we'd have like TAs from the university teach certain classes or we'd go off based off of a curriculum but like my biology teacher was my best friend's dad who was like an emergency room surgeon so he had like knowledge of it and I had gone to school for it or whatever but it was sort of all over the place, but it was very cool, very untraditional. I really enjoyed it, but it is definitely like an intense experience. Well, what about that transition mm -hmm. from opera to songwriting? Yeah, I was never really like 
into classical training. It's not like the kind of music I loved. I was really into like soul and blues and jazz. That's right. I was about to ask you about yeah. like your soulful tone. <laughs> Where does that come from? I was just obsessed with it growing up. I didn't even, like neither of my parents listened to that kind of music. I think I found it through like YouTube. I was just like, Shout out YouTube when you go into like the depths of like. That's exactly what I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When it just absolutely. goes into this hole of like yep. brand new music. That's how I found like a band like Duster. Yes. Just by, yeah. by doing that. Yeah, exactly. That whole thing. I know, I feel like I started with like Adele because I was just obsessed with like singers and I would just watch lyric videos in my room by myself for hours. Um, but I started with that and then I went down into like The Temptations and Etta James and Nina Simone and oh, I was wow. like, oh my God, dude, like there's this whole world. Um, I got really obsessed with Sam Cooke and Ray Charles and I don't know, just like it felt really connected to it and I'm just really obsessed with like singers and like like emotional music and that's like kind of where it started but um but yeah I just listened to a ton of that growing up and then I moved on to like alternative rock and then I got really into pop when I moved here and pop songwriting like I always loved writing music and pop songwriting is like I don't know it's like a sport it's so intense and like that's interesting that you and, say that yeah. I've never heard someone say that yeah that's kind of true <laughs> pop songwriting is like a sport it is it's like yeah I don't know, there's like a formula to it and you sort of like learn the way and then you fuck with the rules to make it interesting and I don't know, I love studying music and the music that does well, the music that is like groundbreaking, sort of like these evergreen hits that last forever and are just eternally like sort of in our culture, like what is it about those songs that made them stick for everyone and it's always just like in the songwriting and the like math of it, it's so tight. But damn, I like, sort of have always been obsessed with it, and I think studying classical music was just an excuse for me to be doing music. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the goal was always to just like write music and be an artist. I think. So one of your favorite songs to perform live, and mm -hmm. a lot of people's favorite songs of yours, is Cult Leader. Yes. <laughs> I want to know, like, take us back to that day. Oh my god, when you wrote that song. Yeah, dude, it was. I remember it so specifically because it was such a weird day like I had been in this funk I had my heart broken I'd gone through like a breakup and I'd just been like down for a couple months and I was like I have to break out of this and I woke up that morning with the session I was going in with my producer Rob and I was like you know what I'm just gonna like be an asshole today like I'm just gonna really go in the full opposite direction and go like full arrogance full like over the top confidence um, and see if that works and if that like tips the scales for me and I stop, you know, feeling so like heartbroken and down on myself. And um, I was listening to Noga Eras and I love her music and it's all very like hyper confident in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in the shower and I wrote the line, I might be the villain in somebody else's story, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. And I came into the session and I was like, Rob, we have to write this like villain song because I, I need it. I need it personally. And then we wrote it and I was we wrote it in a day and I was so excited about it that I posted it the next day. No. Yeah. I literally just posted the demo. The yeah, the day. demo. The day one demo. The next day on TikTok. And it popped off and we were like, oh shit, we gotta finish the song in like two weeks and get it out. Um, but I was just so excited about it and I feel like there's something to be said about posting stuff like when you make it because mm. it's like that energy is really fresh and you feel super connected to it and like I was not like faking the excitement about the song in the video. Like I was genuinely like, fucking listen to this dude. Like it's so insane. Um, whereas I feel like when you make a song and it like goes through its whole process, like by the time you have to promote it, you're kind of like, well, I just wrote this, but it's you're sort like, of not that fresh. Like my mental state like a year ago. Exactly. Or exactly. someone's like, if they write a song about like a guy, let's yeah. say, they'd be like, well, there's a new guy. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going really well. And that guy, so yeah. it's not about this one. Yeah, literally, one. literally, literally. So it was like, I think there's something to be said about like really like freshly showing everyone sort of where you're at, like at that moment. Um, but yeah, posted it the next day and then we finished it as fast as we could and put it out. But yeah, that whole process was really intense. It was definitely like, I like needed to make a song like that mm -hmm. to feel better and then to see how it connects with people now and how, I don't know, people message me about it making them feel really confident. And I was like, that's the goal. Like I wrote it for myself for that reason. And it's so sick that it connected with people and sort of makes other people feel the same way. But yeah, definitely 
I wasn't like, I was in my bad bitch era, and so I wrote a good <laughs> cult leader song. I was like, fully. The way you went. I was fully in my sad bitch era, and I was like, I need something to make me feel better, because if not, yeah. Also, Dirty Dishes yeah. is your latest it single. It is, yeah. Okay, let's talk about this one. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of, yeah. like, you know, just, you know, young adults, just anyone can relate to mm-hmm. those lyrics. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about that. I know. It was definitely, like probably the full opposite (laughs) like as cult leader I went in and I was like I want to be super vulnerable with the song I want to talk about exactly what I'm going through um and I I don't know that song and it came out like a year after I wrote it so it had like been in the vault for a long time but it was one of those that just like felt special when we wrote it and then continued to feel special just like the entire time like I was writing a hundred songs between that song and when it came out but that song always felt like so special just because it was so vulnerable but yeah it was just like uh, I was doing this bad bitch thing <laughs> and writing these songs that were like I eat men for breakfast and I just felt I, I was like this is not how I feel at this moment I feel like my apartment's a mess and I don't want anyone to see me and I have a crush on this person and I'm scared of them realizing who I actually am and I just have to write about it and it was like that was that day and then the next day I was like bad bitch mode once again like it's just (laughs) back and forth how did you name it dirty like why yeah um so the first line is got dirty dishes in my sink and originally it was called clean my room Mm -hmm. um but I posted the song and everyone was everyone was calling it dirty dishes and I get I'd get like messages from people every day like when is dirty dishes coming out and I was like Damn, that has a ring to it. It's so cute. And so I decided to call it that because it just felt like... Yeah. Dirty dishes. It, like, hits. I don't know. Wow. It's okay, wild. Okay, what's yeah. coming up? Like, oh. what are you working on right now? I know you're going to go... Yes. She's on her way to Ireland, by the way. I she's am. She's literally leaving us to go to Ireland. I know. I'm but so sorry. But what is going on musically before we talk about your, yeah. your trip to Europe? Yeah, I am putting out a song in, like, four days. I'm so excited. It's called Sunny Side Up. Let's go. Um, it's about my ex-boyfriend and all the things. Um, Let's go. <laughs> I know. Which one? Like, the last one or the one before the last one? It's the last one. Now, I'm very happily with someone new. That's the thing. So in love, Dirty Dishes era, Lover Girl era. But I recently just started writing. I, like, went through, like, a breakup after, like, a five-year-long relationship. So really intense breakup. We lived together for a long time, whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't write about it. I was like, I'm fine. I didn't even cry. Like, when we broke up, I was like, all is well, brother. I'm, like, moving on. Um, <laughs> and then recently, I've been, like, writing a ton of, like, breakup songs. I don't know why. I'm, like, happily in love, but I feel like now my subconscious is like, okay, we can talk about it. Like, yes, we've healed, everything's okay. And so all my songs recently have been, like, super breakup anthems, and that's what Sunny Side Up is. I wrote it about, like, having breakfast with... You're right, because it's a sequel. It's kind of like yes. the next one. Exactly, Dirty exactly. Dirty Dishes is like... You're in love, you just met. It's the crush. It's the honeymoon phase of like, oh my god, don't look at me. <laughs> and then <laughs> Sunny Side Up is like, pass me the fucking salt. Like, it's just oh. like, it's the full end of it. Like, 30 Dishes is the beginning when you're nervous about them coming over. And Sunny Side Up is like, you've lived together for years and everything is bitter and nothing is good enough. And they're mad at you for burning the eggs and it's just all that bullshit. Did that really happen? Oh, of course. I feel like when you live together for a long time, as you're like breaking up, we were like breaking up for like a year. Like we had decided to break up, but the whole process took so long because our lives were so intertwined. So there was just this like bitter routine that came from it. Like we'd wake up, fight about whatever, have breakfast, say our farewells and just like go about our separate lives fully. But we like lived in the same place. Like it's this weird cohabitation that happens at the end of the relationship where you're still so in the same routine, but there's like no love there anymore, which uh, sounds so intense. And the song's like, I'm sick of sunny side effects. It's so like sort of a lighter take on it. But I think I, I don't know. I find like the end of relationships so interesting to me because it's like, it looks so similar to the beginning. You're doing all the same things. You're still watching movies together. You're having breakfast together. Mm-hmm. You still make him coffee every morning, but it's like, 
the love isn't there. And so it's just this like empty gesture. Um, and then it's time for rebirth after that. Exactly. That's the fire part. Exactly. Isn't that true? So yes. maybe there's going to be a third one. Exactly. Talking about that. Yes. Do we expect that or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like all the music I've been writing recently is sort of all about the cycle of like where it starts, where it ends, where you come out the other side. Like I feel like Sunnyside Up is sort of about like ditching those cycles and getting out of that routine and finally like being over it and getting into your like hot single girl era. Uh oh. Hell yeah. Hot girl summer. <laughs> hot girl summer. Hot girl summer. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some oh my God. comment psychotic girl summer but like hot in all caps and i was like oh exactly hot and psychotic that's the vibe damn that's yeah. a new twist i know so also you're going to ireland i am i'm going to okay. ireland and spain and greece with a bunch of my friends um are you gonna be like are you like a part like you know what do you do like after I midnight know. like what does king mala do when king? she's out with her friends yes you want to know so i i'm like the lamest person ever. <laughs> like the no. most like homebody. I don't wanna go out or see people, but in Europe, it's like time for my club face. I've decided. <gasps> I've never been to a club and we're like What? We're gonna party in Spain. So You've it's party era. No, I've never been to a club. Isn't that ridiculous? Which isn't the crazy? Like I just recently, only a few months ago, got into like my kinda like club girl era. I'm leaving it right now because like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm tired. Of it. <laughs> I'm like, I'd love to dip my toe and like, I recommend get back it. to my couch. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I recommend it. Yeah. I feel like I'm young. I'm in my 20s. I have to like go party in Europe for a second. Just have some Advil. Split second. Yes. Have that water. 100%. This, this club, this club go, girl era. It's tough. Tips. <laughs> Advil, yeah. water, yeah. and your best friend. I love Don't it. Don't leave her side. Yes. Unless there's a really cute. Anyways. <laughs> It looks kind of crazy. I'm it's, so excited. This is actually a time machine. Okay. Oh my god. It's not really a time machine, but it's a lot. There's a lot of cool questions in here. We're just gonna oh, pick shit. a few. Okay, cool. I'm so down. <laughs> They're just random questions, and uh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just pick one. Let's pick one. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea. Avril or Gwen, Dream Tour. Avril. Like Avril Lavigne. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like it'd be so Honestly, fun. I could see that. Like, I was like, just to have a little punk them? era. Just yes. Like jump in. Jump in it. I'd be so down. Avril. Shout down. out. Shout out, Avril. Lavigne. Avril. Lavigne. If you're watching yeah. this, we're both sending it to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 I'll take that. Amazing. Is it two more? Okay. They might be a little more risque than. Oh. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> this is cool. If you could go back in time for a day, which time period would you travel to? That's cool. Oh, I feel like I'd go to the seven days. Like, just the idea of, like, I see you there. long hair and bell bottoms oh and my taking shrooms in the park. Like, that's the dream. Although, I've never done shrooms. So, I feel like maybe I'd be scared. But I feel what? like in the 70s, I'd just have to do it. Oh. Yeah, that's the dream. 70s. 100%. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Let's do another. Amazing. Oh, God. You could probably, like, see you in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who would play me in a movie? Oh, I don't know. You know, I just saw The Boogeyman, which is a Stephen King short story. Um, and the main character, all of my friends, we went together to see it. And they were like, she looks like you. She'd play you in a movie. So that girl from The Boogeyman, main girl. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'd choose her. But yeah. That girl from The Boogeyman. That girl from The Boogeyman. Let's go. All my friends would agree. <laughs> okay. And the final one. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. what do I like to eat when I'm drunk? That's an excellent question. I feel like pizza is my go-to just because it's the only thing open late. But I'm like a sushi at weird times person. Like I had sushi for Ooh. breakfast yesterday. And I feel like when I drink, I'm like, guys, can we get some sushi? So I think I'd choose sushi. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. All right, guys, send her some sushi. We outside. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much. Of course. Kim, well, for thank coming on the show. It's our actual outro. Yes. You're watching the DR Show on Pop Tips. <laughs>